Hey everyone, Brian Von Vie here, back at it again with another story. This time we've got Problem Players argues that cats are omniscient and omnipresent, harasses a contact at a tavern, tries to sabotage the party, and jumps off a building. Let's get right into it. Before we get into the video, we wanted to let you know that there's a giveaway that consists of $180 worth of awesome stuff going on in collaboration with EasyRollerDice.com. All you need to do to enter is click the link in the description below or in the pinned comments, follow us on Twitch and Twitter, and of course visit the EasyRollerDice.com website. You can find all the links in the description or in the pinned comments as usual. Now back to the video. Spoilers for the Krenko's Way adventure from the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. When the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica first came out, I was ecstatic. Ravnica is one of my favorite settings in Magic the Gathering, and I was eager to try the setting in a campaign. I had never played 5th edition at this point, but I had played a few other TTs and was generally familiar with the rules through watching Critical Role and Dark and Dicey. I just needed to find a few players. My best friend came in clutch and managed to find me a few mutual friends who wanted to join the campaign. One player, the only girl in the bunch, wants to know if she can be a cat girl. The Simic Guild on Ravnica creates hybrids. While they usually are focused on aquatic creatures or reptiles, for the sake of potential future plot hooks, I was open to the idea of a cat hybrid. I completely trusted this player as well, so I had no reason to believe that her cat girl would be problematic. So she starts working on a Simic cat girl ranger. She eventually decided that she wanted to try out the Veldalkin race and scrapped her original character concept for a Veldalkin monk. Upon hearing this, one of my other players decided he wanted to play a cat girl. I had immediate reservations about this, but he had been there when I originally okayed the idea, and I didn't want to establish a trend of double standards. So he rolls up a Selesnia half-elven druid cat girl with a very hand-weaved excuse for why she was hybridized. I didn't like the idea of a hybrid character not from Simic, especially since Selesnia and Simic don't necessarily get along, but he was adamant. I should have been a little firmer, but I was scared of losing players since we had a small group already. Session 1 comes round. I've decided to run the Krenko's Way adventure straight from the book as this is my first time DMing. Within 10 minutes, the party has gone to a tavern and started a bar fight. During the fight, Catgirl sneaks out of the tavern, obviously planning something, though I didn't know what yet. He ends up ritual casting speak with animals to ask any nearby cats about the quest giver. They were close enough to where the quest giver lives and I had future plans for this NPC. So I figured it was reasonable to let him get some information this way. Following the quest line, they end up at another tavern with a lead. They're trying to track down an escaped criminal and a weapon dealer who's had suspected dealings with said criminal, typically drinks at this bar. While waiting for her to arrive, Catgirl ritual casts speak with animals again. He plans on asking for intel about the weapons dealer. Quickly noticing a forming trend, I remark that finding a cat in this seedy part of town might be difficult. He begins to get upset and insists that cats would be all over the place since Ravnica is a busy city. After a little debating, we manage to compromise on an investigation check, which he passes. As he asks his chosen cat for any relevant info, I make a wisdom roll for the cat. Cat rolls low, so I tell him that the cat hasn't seen anything relevant. He gets upset, claiming that cats see everything. One of the other players chimes in that cats would probably have better things to do than make a mental note of every person entering a specific tavern. The dealer does arrive at the tavern. I describe her as an attractive 20-something with neon pink hair. Face of the party tries to buy her a drink to loosen her up. He low rolls charisma, and she gives him a thanks but no thanks, big guy brush off. Catgirl then tries flirting with her and buying a drink. Also, low rolls charisma, but insists he should pass the check since the dealer is probably into girls. At this point, the NPC is very off-put and decides to leave. Catgirl won't have it and tries several times to stop her from leaving. After outrunning Catgirl's advances, the dealer manages to slip away into the night. Out of character, Catgirl seems very upset that he wasn't allowed to buy her a drink, insisting that he didn't mean it to be flirtatious, though he did also take the opportunity at this point to establish that his character is lesbian and doesn't wear shoes. 
weird. He then sprints off into the night looking for the dealer. He decides to use a spell slot to cast Speak with Animals to ask a cat where she went. This time, he doesn't pass the investigation check, but to avoid another argument about how prevalent cats should be in this part of town, I send him a very unhelpful cat. Unable to find the dealer due to inadequate perception and investigation checks, he gives up and decides to hire an assassin to hunt her down and kill her. He used the background tables in the Guildmaster's Guide to roll a generated background and ended up with a contact in the Demir, a guild of sneaky types and assassins. He called in that contact and sent him after the dealer. We did this secretly through text messages so the rest of the group wouldn't know. I didn't want to allow this, but hoped that if he managed to get their leader killed, failing the quest might be the slap on the wrist he needed to cut the crap. Next in-game day, the group hunts down her home by interrogating the right people. They are met there by the hired assassin who draws suspicion from the rest of the group. Catgirl says he's a friend of hers, which does little to calm the others, but they agree to go along with it. They pick the lock and break into the house. As soon as they find the weapon dealer, Catgirl immediately tries to attack her. During the ensuing combat, the rest of the party manage to kill the assassin, restrain Catgirl, and convince weapon dealer they mean her no harm. Dealer gives them the info they wanted in exchange for saving her life, which made Catgirl declare that he saved the day for the party. Out of character, everyone begins to press Catgirl for an answer as to why he tried to kill their only lead. He defends his actions by saying that since their conversation at the bar went poorly, he didn't want her passing off information about the party to the criminal they were hunting. Rest of the party accuse him of acting like an incel who was just mad that she rejected his advances. He insists he never meant to flirt with her. But we all agree to drop it and move on. Next session, we have a few absentees. So, we agree to do a non-canon one-shot based on the then upcoming War of the Spark magic set. I describe that they are on a few tall building, about 50 stories, overlooking the ruination of their homeland. After barely letting the quest giver finish the plot hook, Catgirl declares he's jumping off the roof. I give him a very confused look in several, <laughs> are you sure's? He confidently replies, yes, I'm a cat, so I always land on my feet. He looks shocked as I begin to furiously roll d6s to determine fall damage. He asks why I'm rolling so much damage, and I remind him that the building was 50 stories tall. He looks upset and says that I never told him that. All the other players immediately tell him that I made the building's height very clear from the start. He reluctantly accepts his fate and burns a few spell slots, healing himself once the rest of the party stabilize him. The rest of the one-shot goes smoothly, except for a few times he refused to take a plot hook because it would have been out of character for him, which I suppose is fair enough. The campaign went on temporary hiatus due to university exams. During this time, it's brought to my attention that Catgirl has been getting handsy with the girl in our group. Apparently, when the party was getting some after-session drinks, myself being absent since I don't drink, he'd been crossing a few too many physical boundaries. His excuse was that he was drunk and shouldn't be held accountable for his actions, which, <clears throat> pardon my French, is a load of troll dung. With that knowledge, I called the campaign off. We didn't have enough players to continue without him, but there was not a chance I was going to play another session with him at the table. Hey DMs and D&D players around the world, Papa Vaughn here. You're not obligated to deal with this kind of toxicity in your games. Just give that person a hard boot and find someone else because there's always going to be someone better around the corner. Next up, we got a story from r slash Mr. Ripper. Just acted out a play of the campaign so far. Mild spoilers for Storm King's Thunder. Our DM has been running Storm King's Thunder for about 10 sessions now. Our party, me, a satyr druid, a dwarf barbarian, a triton paladin, a tabaxi rogue, now vampire, and another half-elf druid, recently got some downtime while we wait for a ship to be ready to set sail. We had about a week, so we decided to get some errands done. You know, the simple things. Tried to figure out how to cure vampirism fashioned myself some armor from the toenails of giants and other creatures we'd slain. Druids can't wear metal, so next best thing, right? And pissed off a god by talking a cow named Moorbert into becoming dinner. The party had about two days left and didn't want to grind for gold or XP through dungeon crawling, so we decided to put on a play of our giant slaying adventures this far. We found an auction stage in the middle of a bustling market, bought a few kegs to pass out free drinks so we could draw a crowd. 
and the show was on. I cast Fog Cloud and Stone Wall to imitate the Cloud Giant's flying castle, and our seven-foot tabaxi put on a disguise to look like a Cloud Giant. In real life, the player playing the tabaxi stood on a chair while the rest of the party was on their knees while the DM judged our performance as the audience. Heroes of legend, I require your assistance to bring balance to the giant ordaining. Please come with me to Bryn Shander to stop the frost giant attack. Cast darkness on the crowd to change scenes. We've arrived at the Icewind Dale. Please save the town. Cast Sleet Storm to imitate its harsh landscape. Tabaxi changes disguises to look like a frost giant. Oh no, the giants have already broken through the gate. The scene changes again, and where we're doing battle with the giant and eight wolves, which both us druid summons, actually killing them in front of the now roaring crowd. Your toenails shall be mine! Turns into a wolf, ripping the giant's toenails off and dealing the final blow. Hooray for the heroes of Bryn Shander! In real life, our DM is dying with laughter from our terrible acting while we all take a deep theater bow. The whole thing was super choppy, but for a group of players have never gotten past level 4 in a campaign, it wasn't half bad. In the end, we made a ridiculous amount of gold from the drunken audience, each got an inspiration, and successfully spread the tale of the heroes of Bryn Shander. Hey everyone, Brian Von Vier here, as always, checking in after the video. If you like today's vid, then leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified whenever we go live or upload. If you're interested in submitting a story to us to be read live or in a video, head on over to r slash Mr. Ripper and toss one in there. Properly written, of course. Wink, wink. If you'd like to be entered in a giveaway for 180 bucks worth of goodies by our good pals at Easy Roller Dice, then be sure to follow the link in the description and in the pinned comment below, including following us on Twitter and Twitch, and of course, visit the Easy Roller Dice com website. And if you want to use your help, actually, you can come say hi to me and subscribe over on Brian Von VA on YouTube, where I stream games and share fun voice acting videos. Our happy message for the night is twofold. Firstly, I want everyone to know that you're worth all the love in the world and that you deserve to be respected and happy inside and out. Secondly, have strength in yourselves and faith in your companions, friends, and family. Those around you who love you will always care about you, and honestly, you deserve that care, and you've earned that love. So take it. Take all the love. So that being said, all the love. We'll see you next time. Just be safe out there.